The end opening day of MBAA 2022, there have been a lot of interesting announcements, uh, nothing earth shaking this, so far this year. No new Gulf Streams, no new Textrons, blah, blah, blah. And it's been the emerging technologies to get everybody kind of working their way down to this end of the building because the Gulf Streams of today are cool, but the question is what's going to transport us tomorrow? And well, it looks like we got of, a good step here. This is one of those aircraft. You know, when we look at a show like this, there's so much opportunity, not only in legacy <laughs> aviation, but there's so much that's happening in our realm, in the emerging technology realm, that builds upon legacy aviation, but also takes advantage of future technologies and, and technologies today that we're able to then apply to aviation. And so I think what you're seeing is, a lot of folks from legacy aviation, including myself, pilot, who really see and enjoy the heyday of flying, and today, now looking at what the next evolution of flight looks like. And so for many of us, we think it's AAM, or advanced air mobility, in the form of these electric vertical takeoff and landing aircraft. If you could look into the WISC crystal ball, how is this gonna look? What's gonna happen, and what kind of potential timeline are we working at? One of the key things about this sector within aviation, of this emerging technology area, is the idea that we need to demonstrate to the public and to regulators the importance of the safety of these aircraft. Not just in the design of the aircraft, but in the operations. This is the fifth generation we're standing in front of. We have our new sixth generation, and we've been doing this for 12 years now. So it takes time to be able to develop a safe aircraft, to engage with the communities around airports, what does it mean to them to have this new disruptive form of transportation? What will make them feel safe? So it takes a lot of work on the community engagement side, on the partnership side, because we can't do this all ourselves. No one company is going to be able to do all of this themselves. So how do you engage with cities, utilities, airports, all of the different communities that are going to need to be stakeholders in this future aviation form of mobility? And so when I take all of that into the crystal ball, it's going to take time, but I think there's a number of us in the industry that are in a good place to be able to endure that long-term investment for what will be an opportunity for many people to enjoy in the future. The airframe as it stands now, what are the capabilities that you have? What capabilities are you shooting for? So this is our Generation 5 aircraft, so it has a separate lift system plus a cruise system. So it has these 12 independent lift fans that help lift it like a helicopter. And then it has the pusher fan that drives it on the wing and can actually fly on the wing and take advantage of those efficiencies. The next generation aircraft has 12 motors and has a tilt mechanism. So it actually has the front motors will tilt up, allow it to take off, and then they'll tilt forward to go in forward flight. So with that new system, it adds so much more capability to what we're able to offer to include four seats. And so with that, there's a whole range of new ideas that come and new opportunities for not only the aircraft, but for the operations. The propulsion systems are all electric. You know, this aircraft, for example, no fluids on board, which is kind of crazy as a pilot to not have a single drop of liquid on there. It's a bit of a different mindset in terms of how we look at these aircraft, but the propulsion is the heart of it, and that's really where the opportunity lies. Because not only are these aircraft safe in the form of multiple redundant systems, but they're also quieter. And that's where you really get into that community engagement aspect of showing people that these are not helicopters or these are not your general aviation aircraft. This is a whole new form of airplane that they've never seen before and we would love to know what they think about it. Piloting. We do not have a pilot on board. We have no plans to, but for us, we will still have a human supervising the flight. Everything from the pre-departure briefing, safety briefings, all these types of things. There's always going to be a human there, and then once the aircraft actually flies, there's always going to be a human supervisor in the loop watching over the flight as it goes. How do you plan to deal with the public and teaching them about what to trust and what not to? We actually started a couple years back engaging with the public, getting their thoughts on what would make it feel more safe. And as you can imagine, it, it varies by age, it varies by demographic, it varies by geography. But by and large, when people see the opportunity that these aircraft provide to them, the ability to fly over traffic, we're targeting $3 per passenger mile. So when you have the opportunity to fly 10, 20 miles for 30 to $60 and not sit in traffic for three hours in some of these larger cities, that really starts to open up opportunities of better access to job opportunities, better access to health care. All these types of things start really changing the way that I think people will look at these aircraft. And so 
It's not so much, for example, people who are upset about the aircraft being in the air over their house. Now it's, hey, I actually have a benefit from that aircraft and it's accessible and approachable to me. It's going to be an interesting future. There's a science fiction writer that I was very fond of, Robert Heinlein, who had a whole future history charted out for hundreds of years. And it was interesting where he looked at various technological innovations and the fact that people would get into vehicles and not worry about a pilot or a driver or anything else was something that became a major social revolution and a part and parcel of his future history series. So we're getting there quick. We subscribe to that. <laughs> that is what these aircraft provide, that opportunity to disrupt ground transportation as we know it today.